I went recently, like right before it started, to New York. Yeah. It was like my first time there. Or not my first time, but first time in a long time. When when was that? This was about like two and a half months ago. Okay. And I was really excited for this big trip and I got to visit my friend who's starting grad school at NYU. And for some reason, once we were walking down the street and out of nowhere, I got like this feeling of anxiety in my stomach. Mm. And I was like, oh, this is really weird. Like I haven't felt anxiety in years. Like wonder what it's coming from. I hope it doesn't come like all all the typical thoughts that come with anxiety. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty. Out of nowhere, you just said they were. Yeah, and then I tried to dive into it later. For some reason, it made me feel very anxious and insignificant, and Mm -hmm. just like wow, there's so many. Like, why does it matter if I sit on this bench or if I don't sit on this bench? Or why does it matter if I wear? these shoes or other shoes or if I say this thing or not this thing Mm. so that's kind of where it started growing and Mm. then it started growing more into like more existential thoughts of like who am I even or like why are we even here Mm -hmm. like what's the point of anything at this point as a therapist I, I feel a bit bewildered one thing I know for certain is that this sudden attack of existential angst does not come out of nowhere. It's inconceivable uh, that life could have been going entirely well for her and then suddenly, suddenly this out of the blue attack. So we've got to begin to, to track it down. One outstanding characteristic of the attack is her sense of uh, insignificance, which is triggered by being in a large city. However, she grew up in a large city in Los Angeles uh, and we're going to need to start investigating the meaning of this. This. As I start to try to take some history from you in our first sessions, uh, there was this this puzzle that you had been extremely happy in your life. You had had very, a very good life, and nothing bad had ever happened Mm-mm. to you. So that was that was the way I got. Mm-hmm. But the way that's how I st- I would agree with all of that. You agree. But then, as I experienced it, the, uh, as we went along, things started to change in that way. You know, you, you related to me that, uh, you know, you never even had a fall off your bicycle. You had good relationships yeah. with everyone. Your childhood had been perfect. And maybe that's why this was scaring you so much, because yeah. everything had been so perfect. But then, over, over these last few sessions, other things started to come up to me as we talked. I began to get the feeling that you really weren't that happy as a child. There were a lot of unhappy things going on, mm-hmm. especially you know last week when we talked about this brace that you had to wear for three years mm-hmm. and uh, how awful that was and mm-hmm. humiliating it was for you in gym class and mm-hmm. things like that. And then I've also, we haven't explored this in, in de- a greater depth, but also that things were not always very happy at home. Your mm-hmm. mother was a pretty unhappy woman. Uh, and she was pretty restrictive. And um, I think she was happy. She was just worried. I don't well, know if she's unhappy always worried is the word. Some, if she hears a rustling outside in the yard and thinks that somebody's going to be dead, you know, <laughs> it, it, this, this sounds like this that she is. Not, but she not isn't com- really. It's weird to me because like she really does worry a lot. But I would never in my life think of her as unhappy because she's so happy. No. But she's worried. 